What is going on everybody? I am Michael Anthony and thank you for checking out my article in the black and white edition of Shutter Magazine. I love this month. You guys might not know it though if you follow me on social media because we don't post a whole lot of black and white pictures. There's a reason for that and it's more of a marketing reason. But from a creative or an artistry standpoint, black and white pictures are some of the most beautiful that there are out there, right? And there's a reason for that. There's a couple of, of times that you would want to convert an image to black and white and that's what I really want to talk to you about specifically today. How do you know black and white are color? And you're not not just choosing black and white or color based on Instagram, right? Everybody knows if you ask people black and white or color, you're gonna get a lot of likes on your post, or a lot of comments, should I say, right? It's like engagement bait on Instagram. But more importantly, I'm talking about for you and for your clients, when do you convert an image to black and white? So there's two reasons why you're gonna to wanna to convert an image to black and white. They both have to do with the same thing, and that is distraction. Number one is when the colors are distracting from the emotion of the image, and number two is when the colors are distracting from the actual aesthetic of the image. Let's talk about number one for a second. It's no mistake that a lot of photojournalists tend to shoot in black and white. And the reason for that is because oftentimes they're photographing the highs and the lows of moments, okay? Moments are very important specifically to event wedding photographers and even photojournalists, right? And by removing the color from a scene, our eyes can be directed directly to the most important part of an image, which is the emotion in an image. So if I'm a wedding photographer and I'm capturing a first dance, Okay, and let's just say that uh, even it's outside at night and we're not lighting and color's not really a problem, right? If that moment that the bride leans in and cries on her father's shoulder, okay, if I have the perfect composition and everything's lined up, if I were to remove the skin tones and all of the distracting patterns from the colors that they might be wearing and the background and all of that, at my eye as a viewer now goes directly to the emotion in that photograph. So what I tend to do is whenever I'm photographing moments, I tend to find a scene where the composition is gonna be perfect and everything is lined up. I'll keep my camera in that spot and I will wait for the action to happen and I will shoot through the moment as that moment is happening and thereby hoping, hopefully capturing a good photo. Sometimes it happens, sometimes you miss, right? But then you keep playing that game throughout a wedding day and you'll get it. But more back to the point, right? What makes a good black and white image? So when you are drawn into the photo because of the emotion, okay, you're more likely to connect with it. And emotion is what sells pictures and emotion is what dials a person to connect with that photo down the line 10 years and 20 years. So they not only know what was happening when the pictures were taken, but they also know how they were feeling when those photos were taken as well too. The second reason that you might wanna convert an image to black and white would be because the colors are distracting in the image. This is for the actual aesthetics. Now, we often do this as wedding photographers when we're photographing in mixed light. How often have you guys had to do that if you're a wedding photographer? Probably every wedding at some point, right? Sometimes we just don't have control of a scene. Let's just say we're photographing a reception in the summertime and the daylight's coming in, but they still have the overhead tungsten lights on and they're like the perfect mix or the perfect balance. Yes, you can take your flash out and you can adjust the, the ratio of ambient light to flash and you could you know do it that way which is what we tend to do the majority of the time but sometimes natural light is a better fit for that scene or sometimes you want to use bounce flash or sometimes you left your CTO gels at home right you there might be a million reasons why you might want to do this in those instances if you have the right image it might be appropriate to convert it to black and white as well too what are a couple things you can do to ensure that you have good black and white photos well, what I found is simplistic scenes, okay? If you have a scene that doesn't have a lot of distractions, a lot of things in the background, oftentimes converting it to monochrome can uh, really bring out the beauty in that particular scene. I tend to look for dark backgrounds oftentimes if my subjects have light skin, and if my subjects have darker skin, I tend to look for lighter backgrounds. And by doing that, we're able to create contrast between foreground and background, and we can direct the viewers directly to our images. We've created a set of black and white presets that we use specifically on all of our images that we convert, our, convert to black and white, and we can get them done in just a second or two by just clicking a button and in Lightroom switching them over to black and white. Now, another thing that makes a good black and white image is to utilize lighting. And why is that, right? What does lighting create? Lighting creates contrast in photos that are shot and delivered in black and white often look better with higher amounts of contrast. And the reason for that is because the stark differences between black and white will bring the viewer directly to those changes in interrupted color patterns or interrupted tones, and we can get directly to our subject. So if your subject is either light or dark and your background is just opposed against that, it's the opposite, then we are gonna have a very, very good scenario for a black and white image. So I hope you guys enjoyed these tips. There are a lot more in the article. Make sure that you check the article out, read it, in its entirety. And if you guys have questions, please feel free to email me at mike at elevateyourphotography.com. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you next month at Shutter Magazine.